Hey everybody, how's it going? Mike here from The Focus Garage and welcome to today's video. In this episode, I'm gonna be giving you a little review on my Volkswagen GTI over the two years that I've owned it and with the 50,000 miles that are now on this vehicle. So jumping right into it here, I purchased this vehicle. It is a 2016 Volkswagen GTI. It is a Autobahn trim level and it is with the six speed automatic dual clutch transmission. I purchased this vehicle March of two years ago with around 26, 27,000 miles on it. Right now, the car is just about to turn 50,000 miles. So I've put about roughly 25,000 miles on the car, which by average standards is pretty normal as far as miles on a car. The average person puts anywhere from 12 to 15,000 miles per year on a car. And with this last year of 2020, having some remote work schedule and stuff like that, I'd say that you know I'm still right in line with what's considered average miles on a car. Now, when I bought this vehicle used, it was a certified pre-owned car and it was about two and a half years used. It was a one owner leased vehicle. I did this because I wanted to make sure the car was still under some type of warranty. So with Volkswagen certified pre-owned warranty, you get two years and 24,000 miles from the date of purchase with the vehicle for any kind of issues that may arise over the life of the car. Now, when I bought this car, it was completely bone stock. And as far as I believe, I think it was female owned and it was never modified. Um, all of the mods that I've done on the car, it looks like nothing's really been tinkered with before. Uh, the car didn't have any kind of window tint on it. And it came from North Carolina, which is also nice because that means the car probably wasn't exposed to any kind of harsh winters or anything like that. When I got the car, uh, there was no real surface rust on the subframes. All the bolts look clean, not corroded or anything like that. Uh, so that's something to look for. If you guys kind of want more detail on what to look for when buying a Mark 7 GTI, definitely drop it down in the comments down below and let me know. I can help you guys out with whatever it is that you may be looking for uh, when shopping for one of these vehicles. But I bought the car bone stock with the plans of kind of modifying a little bit and making it my own. Uh, over the course of the last two years that I've owned the vehicle, some of the mods that I've done um, in no particular order here, just from visual and performance, um, I went ahead and I installed the Golf R European LED taillights on the car. I bought some new speed wheels for it, uh, put those on the car, got rear spacers to kind of get a little bit more flush fitment with those wheels as well, tinted the windows, did weather techs. Um, and then as far as the performance side, I went ahead and I did a upgraded air filter. I believe it's a AFE filter. Uh, I think it's a dry filter. Took out the factory snow guard. Uh, we put a downpipe on the car. We did the OEM one stage colder spark plugs, and then we tuned the vehicle. I went ahead and I bought an access port uh, private party, and then we reached out to Equilibrium Tuning for a ECU tune, which is your engine, and then a TCU tune, which is your transmission. When you guys have these dual clutch transmission cars, if you are doing an engine tune, it's pretty much necessary for you to do a trans tune. Sure, you don't have to, but one, you're gonna be having problems with your transmission, and two, you're not gonna be getting the most out of your tune if you don't do that as well. So I got an engine tune and a trans tune through Equilibrium Tuning about one year into ownership. So I've had that now for about a year as far as the tune vehicle goes. And uh, outside of that, we've driven it. Now, I know you guys are all watching this video. You're gonna wanna know what's gone wrong with the car, what issues have I had, has anything weird come up with the car, anything at all. Now, when I bought the car, uh, first thing I did is I kind of, you know, did a real good shakedown and inspection of it to see if there's anything that I should be looking out for in the future, or anything wrong with the car, anything need attention, anything warranty claims. And I'll let you know at this point now, two years into ownership, I have not had to file for a single warranty claim. I have attempted one claim and that was denied and we'll get into that in a couple minutes here, uh, but I have not had any repairs done under warranty. So as far as what I've done to the car maintenance wise, I've got two sets of wheels and tires, so I haven't even gone through a set of tires yet because I've got one set that I run in the winter and another set that I run in the summer, but I've only done oil changes. I buy all of my oil changes through FCP Euro and I run liquid Molly oil and that's it. Uh, I usually do my oil changes every five to 6,000 miles. Yes, I know that Volkswagen rates this car for 10,000 mile oil change intervals, but when you're tuned and modified and you drive the car more spiritedly, you don't want to go those full 10,000 miles. So I go anywhere from five to 7,000 miles on my oil. Then I swap it out for the liquid molly, you know, fresh oil every time. Outside of those oil changes, I haven't had to do any maintenance to the car at all. Now, like I said, there's about 50,000 miles on the car and I still not sure if it's the original pads and rotors or not, but there is still ample life left on the front and rear pads and rotors. No big groove, no big lip. They dust like absolute crazy, which I've read is maybe one of those things that's an indication of original pads or at least 
an OEM part number pad. Um, so when I do upgrade, I'm going to be going to something that shouldn't dust as much because it's absolutely insane. You look at these wheels and they get absolutely covered in brake dust. So you're always cleaning the wheels. Um, you're always cleaning the uh, brake calipers, which are, you know, bright red color. So they look real dingy and kind of dirty uh, whenever you kind of accumulate some brake dust on that there. But I haven't even done brakes on this car yet. I also did one dual clutch transmission service at 40,000 miles, which you should be doing every 40,000 miles on these dual clutch cars. But when you're modified, you should be doing it every 20 to 30,000 miles. So about 10,000 miles into this fluid, maybe in another 10,000 miles when the car's got around 60,000 on it, I'm going to be doing dual clutch fluid. As far as services that I'm going to be wanting to do in the future, my car does have the limited slip differential. So I know you should swap out that fluid every so often, every 40 to 50,000 miles. It's a very, very similar pump to the Haldex pump and the all wheel drive cars that operates this limited slip differential. So I'm gonna go ahead and buy some fluid for the LSD there and swap out that as well. Uh, it's part of the performance pack that comes on my Autobahn trim level GTI there. Now, things that have gone wrong or things that have been weird with the car, I do have, or did have rather, that annoying sunroof rattle that is very, very common on Mark 7s. I fixed this actually on my own by looking up a couple different methods, and I did two things. I purchased gummy fledge weather strip lubricant, and I lubricated all of the areas where the weather stripping meets the body and the frame of the sunroof, and I went ahead and added some felt where the rear lip of the sunroof kind of closes into the frame there. This has quieted it down a lot, but it hasn't fixed it entirely. Uh, in really, really cold climate, you do still have the occasional sunroof kind of rattle noise. I've heard you can get this remedied by going to the dealer and sometimes they have to replace the entire assembly. I don't wanna go through with that because I know that your headliner might not align properly. They may break clips in your interior and cause other rattles. So it's just not worth it to me. Um, I'm just gonna continually reapply this uh, weather strip lubricant and it pretty much quiets it down almost nothing. Like I said, it was kind of one of those things that was happening throughout the year and now it only happens in extreme cold. So I'm gonna consider that fixed. I did, however, notice recently if my car has been parked for a couple of days and I'm talking three, four days, I get one little dime sized drip of oil on the ground. And at first I thought maybe it was like my oil filter leaking or the oil drain plug, but bad news, it looks like it is the rear main seal. So right where the transmission meets the engine, on the bottom of that there, you can see some oil residue and it kind of sprays along the bottom there and it's on the uh, bottom of the oil pan and the drain plug a little bit there. And we look like we have a very, very minor rear main seal leak. Now the problem with this is that it's never gonna get better, it's only gonna get worse, and my car is out of warranty in a couple of months here. So I went to the dealer about a month ago and brought this to their attention, and they said that this isn't leaking nearly enough for it to be considered an active leak. What the service technician and service writer showed me, they obviously lifted the car up and then you know they pulled everything off, and I'll preface this with I hate going to the dealership. I absolutely don't bring my cars to the dealer. I haven't been to the dealer for service and I think five plus years. I do all my own service myself or I pay independent shops. But I went to the dealer because I wanted to have this taken care of under warranty because I think this is an eight to 10 hour job because the transmission has to be separated from the engine to replace this seal. So I went to the dealer, tried to make a claim and I was brought into service and they showed me and they said, hey, your car is almost bone dry. Yeah, we can see there's some oil residue but it doesn't look like an active trip. In order for us to actively pursue this claim with Volkswagen of America, it needs to be an active leak and not a seep. So they pretty much told me, kick rock, pound sand, and come back before your warranty ends and we'll go ahead and try again. So that was annoying. I'm very much not pleased at that. To me, it doesn't make sense. If my car is leaking, it's a freaking active leak, you know? So why are you not going to service this? I'm not sure if they're trying to make me have to pay for this outside of warranty. I'm not sure how strict Volkswagen are with their warranty claims, but regardless, whatever it is, it's very annoying to me, somebody who considers myself slightly mechanically inclined, at least enough to look underneath a car and tell that it's leaking, that you're gonna deny me of this claim. And I'll shoot some pictures up here so you guys can see what that looks like as far as the drippage slash seeping slash leak. Let me know what you think. I've looked this up on the forums and it is actually a relatively common problem with the Mark 7 GTIs that these will leak oil from the rear main seal. So I'm trying to get that taken care of before the car's out of warranty because I don't wanna pay for it myself and I don't want it to develop into a worse leak. If this gets bad enough, it can fill the bell housing with oil. I can have transmission issues with the clutches and things like that. So. I see that it's seeping. I see that there's dirty oil residue on the bottom of my transmission and engine. Take care of me, get this figured out, get this fixed before anything else worsens or develops. So 
I'll make a follow up with that when I have time to kind of get it sorted and see what's going on there. But outside of that little issue with the oil leak there, there's been nothing wrong with this car. The electronics have been completely fine. And my car has got the adaptive cruise control, the blind spot monitoring. I've had no issues with that. I've had no issues with weird kind of squeaks and rattles outside of the sunroof, no driveline vibrations, no check engine lights, no traction control lights, nothing like that. Knock on wood, this car has been absolutely fantastically reliable to me in the time that I've had it. And it's been great on gas as well. Uh, I typically average around 25, 26 miles per gallon mixed. Uh, if I'm on the highway, I can see well over 30. Uh, if I'm beating on it, I see you know high teens, low 20s. But just driving the car like a normal person in mixed city highway conditions, I usually see around 25, 26 miles per gallon, which is perfectly acceptable. I'm running a 93 octane tune, if you guys are wondering, because I do have pretty readily available access to 93 octane uh, fuel here in the area that I'm at in the northwest Chicago suburbs. And I think that's going to pretty much wrap it up. I've tried to think of everything with the car that I've experienced over my ownership here, and that seems pretty much it. I've done oil changes, I've done a DSG service, and as far as reliability, the car's been spot on except for this newly developed oil seep, and that's it which was yet to be fixed by Volkswagen. Now I do understand, and I don't want to get too in the weeds with this here, with the whole modified car thing, you know, you do run kind of a fine line on whether or not a dealership is going to want to fix that for you. My particular instance, they weren't denying the claim because the car was modified. They didn't point anything out of that. Your experience will vary based on this. So don't hold me as your shining example with that. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you guys do own a Mark 7 GTI or if you're interested in purchasing one, drop it in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. This is Mike from the Focus Garage signing off and I will catch you guys in the next video.